this House has considered NHS reorganisation. That's Siobhan McDonough. Mr Gates, and it's a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship. Um, I love saying that, particularly, <laughs> particularly uh, um, to our current chair. Um, um, thank, I'd like to thank my honourable friend, the member for Warrington South, for securing this important debate. I'm here today to put the record, uh, on the record the Wild West of the NHS in South West London, which will be well known uh, to um, the Minister a branch of the NHS that has spent the last two decades desperately trying to close the A&E and maternity unit at St Helier Hospital on the border of my constituency and move the services to leafy, wealthy Belmont in Sutton. Let me describe the geography for members unfamiliar with my constituency. St Helier Hospital is based in the deprived area of Rose Hill, Further south is the Royal Marsden in the wealthy area of Belmont, and to seven miles west is Epsom Hospital. The local CCGs are proposing to move all of their acute services to just one of these sites. This is about uh, <coughs> accountability. Over the past 20 years, a staggering £50 million has been wasted on almost identical consultations to conclude the obvious uh, obvious. Acute services must be placed in the area where people who are most deprived and most in need and with the greatest health issues. They must be placed at St Helier Hospital's current site. It does not matter how many brands, how many names the local N uh, NHS gives these proposals or how many marketing consultants they hire, moving these health services would be catastrophic for my constituents and catastrophic for South West London. Because what my local NHS fails to consider is this. If St Helier loses acute services, my constituents will not turn to Belmont. And the Minister will know Lavender and Cricket Green and Figs Marsh and Mitcham Town Centre. They will turn north to St George's or east to Croydon. Uh, hospitals already under extraordinary pressure. Um, I told uh, the Prime Minister only today of the case of my constituent who last Monday had to queue outside St George's Hospital because the A&E was simply full. Two weeks ago, St George's was on black alert. They had no beds. The managers had to cancel all meetings and walk around wards attempting uh, to get people discharged. Um, and these pressures exist before the winter bad weather starts and before uh, we are in the middle of the flu epidemic that we are now anticipating. I, I, could, I, I could not possibly have emphasised the point to my local NHS any more than that their statistics and their suggestions that people are going to move away from London out to Belmont uh, from areas in my constituency are simply not going to happen. And in all the years that I've been fighting this, nobody in the NHS has ever said anything publicly to support my view until the week before last, when I couldn't believe it, when the chair of St George's um, NHS Trust uh, wrote a letter uh, arguing that there is no formal requirement to take account of the impact of their proposals on the other providers. Let me make this clear. Uh, moving acute hospital services from St Helier to Sutton could bring St George's Hospital to the point of collapse. And yet those consulting on these proposals were not even taking the inevitable impact on other hospitals into account. Um, is there a code of guidance on consultation in the NS, NHS? Because it doesn't seem that the people in South West London have read it. Take uh, last year, when the same consultation was run, this time by the hospital trust itself, and it was called a public engagement. To the public, the trust portray a neutral stance whereby a suitable site will be selected across South West London for their services. To the stakeholders in Sutton, um, they confess their desire to move the services to their wealthy area. And to me, they pretend that the consultation will genuinely seek the views of the public.
before they happened to ignore six times the numbers of negative responses to the consultation to positive ones. I wasn't surprised um, considering um, that the Trust, and this is hard to believe, Epsom and St Helier Trust delivered their consultation document to most parts of Sutton, most parts of Epsom, but not a single street in my constituency. And that is called a consultation. Um, can I ask the Minister whether he thinks that it's appropriate for an NHS body to run a consultation or an engagement and simply exclude part of the catchment area? Better to deliver no leaflets at all than not include everybody. Fast forward to the latest attempt where flawed consultation documents are created so that boxes can be ticked and the process can move along quicker and quicker. The latest versions argue that Belmont is the deprived area locally, but staggeringly, the same document suggests that Pollard's Hill is outside the catchment area for St Helier Trust, or for the Epsom and St Helier Trust. This will be news to the largest GP practice in Pollard's Hill, Wideway, who send 35% of their patients to St Helier at the moment. Um, they, you know, they always claim to be neutral about sites, but when I managed to secure £267 million from the Department of Health and the Treasury uh, under both the Labour government and the Coalition government to rebuild St Helier, guess what happened? They sent the money back. They didn't want to use it. So, for me, it seems to be every step forward comes up with a new consultation involving closed meetings, un unswervingly seeming not to take account of health inequalities, which I understand is a legal requirement on the part of the NHS. They ignore, um, they ignore access to the site, public transport, percentage of car ownership, and we just make no uh, progress. For me, the last 20 years as the MP of, for Mitchum and Morden has been like being in the film Sliding Doors every, or Groundhog Day, just every month. And always, always, you can absolutely rely that every July, some bit of the South West London uh, NHS wants to come up with a consultation in order to move uh, acute services from St Helier Hospital. I simply want to put a stop to it. I simply want the staff at St Helier to know that they have a future, and I want my constituents not to be worried about how they are going to get access to an A&E.